So I was talking about hippies, and I wanted to uh, finish that. Talking about, you know, how they, what I experienced. And I don't, I'm not a hippie. Yeah. Just lived in a state with hippies. <laughs> Two states with hippies. And um, what I experienced was... Oregon's a lot more hippie than California even really. And uh, the thing to it is, uh, I think hippies and and Jewish people, like not practicing Jews, but, but people from Jewish families, um, seem to have a relationship. And social uh, thing going and, and, and um, what I think it was was they both have a common uh, a lot of hippies not all hippies but a lot of hippies had Christian families um, which is similar to what a Jewish person would be um, the Jewish families just go farther back but um, Christians were uh, so I think what they were both like not practicing Christians and both not practicing Jews but were from families that were Jewish and stuff and, and um, they were trying to like be the the anti Christ, of, you know, or something on the Christian side, and just somebody, an atheist Jew. Because I remember both guys I met that were that were hippie that that I talked to that were involved with that the hippie movement a little bit more than others. They uh, they both had stated they were atheists. And a lot of the Jewish people I meet are atheists. Not all of them, but a lot of them seem to be some kind of atheist. Uh, I, I do meet some who are Jewish and want to convert over to Christianity, but their family is Jewish. They get money from their family. They don't, so they kind of hide it that they believe in Christianity a bit. But yeah, so I don't know. It's one of those things. I noticed about it, about the relationships, you know, socially. And um, <clears throat> another thing is coffee. And that's what I, I was going to elaborate on a little bit because that's kind of a hippie capitalism is involved with the coffee. <laughs> coffee and drugs. <clears throat> but um, so I... This guy, he was the Iron Turtle. He picked coffee and all that in Mexico. Grew coffee. He learned how to, he knew everything about it. He had won like contests and growing plants and flowers at state fairs for flowers he'd grown and stuff. He was an organic farmer, but a champion got you know, farmer. And um, plus he's a social worker, had a degree in social work and a two year degree in diesel repair. So he was a skilled guy. Grew up on a farm, and um, that was his talent was growing plants, coffee, and um, so we talked a lot, and he wanted me to be president of his uh, franchise. That he wanted to start a coffee business and he had seven different uh he had a jewish guy that was the the money backer he was a friend of his and the jewish guy he had more than one jewish friend and um the jewish friend he uh he was a uh, Somebody who uh, 
It's an executive, did a good job. And they set up uh, seven different farmers markets. They had got ready to get their cart, their coffee carts on. And um, he had another friend that owned a restaurant that was growing the coffee. And uh, so it was going to be homegrown coffee. And um, it's going to be a good business, actually. So what I did to get prepared is I read every book about coffee carts and coffee houses and coffee. And you found out all kinds of things about coffee. So I'm studying about the history of coffee all the way back, you know, when it first came out. And it was illegal because the Pope, there was like dancing goats. And um, they figured they were high on drugs or something, and drunk. And so they made it illegal to, uh, the dancing ghosts had eaten the coffee plants, they found out. And then so they made it illegal for there to be coffee, called it the devil's cup, the devil's brew or the devil's cup or something. And uh, then uh, people, uh, new popes came around and then, uh, he blessed the coffee and said, no, people can drink it. And um, some people drank, started drinking a lot of coffee in church and stuff and everything. And um, they had these coffee houses. And the coffee houses is where they would meet and talk to each other about revolutions. And it was that way all the way to the American Revolution, everything. And um, they were called the Penny Universities. And so you can get an education because you're talking with people who have educations, even though you don't have one. So like people would socialize with college people with people who aren't college people. And it was like one of the only places people go that way socially. It was a coffee house. And that's where they would meet and talk about uh, the revolution. And uh, so I started getting these inspiration and ideas about coffee houses you know and the only thing like what would be a penny university would be borders where you could go and get books you know and read them and um so i had some ideas i was going to call it a coffee and but anyways this coffee house thing it fell through because the the Jewish guy lost his job doing during the, the market crash but during Bush's market crash and um, well the market crash that happened during George Bush's presidency and so then the coffee business that fell through it was kind of a bummer I was all pumped he was gonna move to Mexico and uh let me sell franchise you know sales to uh people once we got the carts going and then be president of the company and he would live off of uh, royalties you know and i'd get money and get to be president and get a good job but uh he uh It fell through. Didn't work. It was exciting though. It was all just, you know, because the guy had to, it fell through, he lost his job, and then he had to go move to New York. He couldn't stay. Or it would have been a way for him to get money too, but he lost his brand new house, and he just inherited a house in Queens, New York, so he moved there. Or a condo or something, his mother's condo. <clears throat> And uh, so we, I don't know, we stayed in touch a little while. Just in case some, I had some other ideas with some getting a greenhouse going and stuff. I was looking for a place to put a greenhouse so we could grow some plants. To found a Japanese play rest or Japanese store that would was looking for people to grow certain types of vegetables and 
name your price, but uh, all that didn't come through, go through either. And then, um, so I found out about coffee, so, and because I had done petitioning and stuff, and that, that I kind of had a political, um, my ideas on politics and, and the coffee houses had to do with revolution and all that, you know, and I came up, it inspired me. And then when I went through college, cause the like higher into coffee got you, I had to, you know, you find out that, uh, coffee, coffee had to do with slavery in Brazil and Colombia and other places. And, um, currently they're still only earning like $2 a day to pick coffee beans all day. And the energy exchange to that is we pick two dollars for a cup of coffee, right? And they pick co all day, you know, beat coffee beans to make who knows how many cups of coffee. And um, it's ridiculous. That's the social structure to that, you know, wherever you think that is socially. But, uh, so that was a kind of me, to me, that was like, you know, just something as a Christian, I saw it ethically, there's a way to start a coffee business and help them get their own coffee farms over there and stuff, with some people trying to do. But, you know, I just read, you read about coffee and, and at the high end, like Starbucks, that guy's a hippie, <laughs> the owner, the guy that started our Starbucks and, um, he was a supporter of Obama financially, but he's kind of the high end hippie, I guess would be coffee, the coffee guy. <laughs> Cause the, the guy told me, uh, it, coffee's hippie dope. That's hippie's dope nowadays. You know, when they get old, they start drinking a lot of coffee. And, um, so, anyways, that's what I wanted to share about hippies and coffee. And, but I came up with an idea, and now I'm doing a Harvard government classes and finishing business now. Get, working towards my master's, uh, some kind of equivalence to a master's anyways, and uh, doing online training for business, marketing, and, and finance, and um, so I did some political science, I did some sustainable science courses, and um, studied, read a lot of books about sustainability for forestry, Sustainable forestry, different things like that. A lot of bit about sustainable architecture, and uh, read some about climate change. You know, it's um, it was an interest to me. A sustainable business is what it ended up being for me. Um, when I'm thinking about business, I'm thinking about sustainable culture. And um, so this coffee house was a way to make it sustainable. I could help them over there into the coffee, you know, and their security and stuff. And, you know, trying to, they got vigilante groups now because they have no security for themselves, can't police. They end up policing, building jails out of little houses and whatever, you know, and little shops and staying up all night themselves, women the women, you know, vigilante have to arrest people some of the smaller communities Mexico probably other places and um, so I thought well helping them with their get the proper training and get some honor there going with their like a, a real militia or something and the government to honor their 
their policing thing and get them trained to be real police or whatever that's going on, you know, they need to do to fight the cartel and um, get them some sustainable farms by using this coffee house thing and get a coffee house going, right? That's also that has a political thing going and uh, helps us to keep a lobbyist deal where we can uh, take part more easily in getting laws passed and checking the politicians that way and, you know they're hiring it but we if we had like a coffee house that was in every city and every state and had a lot of people you know using the coffee houses and um, passing laws you know that that are normal ones straight laws that, that right and left can agree on then they wouldn't be as divided in that certain sector and um, kind of like mothers against drugs driving type laws you know like stuff like that happens to be easy to to help those people that, that want to do something about it you know I don't know so Trying to work, find what kind of normal things there's the median, you know, that people agree on. And um, lobby, pay lobbyists to uh, do the work, professionals. <laughs> so that's another goal. But that's the social, that's like the highest end, you know, the copy and. The hippie scene, I guess. Oh, uh, coffee stuff. I like that coffee.